Hi, and welcome back to Small Caps. My name is Jess Fertig, and today I have the absolute pleasure of speaking with Michael Thurn, who is the CEO of Farmost. The ASX ticker code is PAA. Hi, Michael. It's great to see you again. Yeah, hi, Jess. Good to see you as well. So, Michael, the last time we caught up, which I think was about five months ago last year, you had just been newly appointed as the CEO of the company, and a lot has happened since then. But I thought before we delve into some of the questions about your latest announcement, would you mind providing our small caps audience with just a brief overview of the company? Yes. Uh, so Farmost is a, a company that's repurposing a, an approved veterinary product called Montepentol. And Montepentol is, uh, in for veterinary use, is used to remove worm infestations in sheep. What we've done and what our research has shown is that that uh, monopentol may be useful, uh, very useful in the treatment of motor neurone disease. So where our latest results that have come out have all been focused around the phase one study that we rec recently completed. Okay, great. So yeah, just sticking with that, Michael. So your initial results from your phase one trial have, have just come out. You've just released them. Um, can you elaborate on those findings for, for the treatment of so MND the, and ALS? Yes. Yeah, so so the, the phase one study was conducted in, in 12 patients with motor neurone disease or, or ALS. And those 12 patients were on various doses of study drug, and we divided them into two cohorts. Cohort one that received uh, two milligrams per kilogram and six milligrams per kilogram for roughly about 12 to 13 months. And then cohort two, which went from a lower dose of four milligrams per kilogram up to 10 milligrams per kilogram. In that cohort, six patients that were on that cohort receiving the drug, they received it for approximately six to eight months. And what the study showed, and it's remembering it's a phase one study, so the primary objectives are really to look at safety and tolerability. Uh, so the safety and tolerability results that came back showed us that Monopento was very well um, tolerated by these patients, these 12 patients at doses up to 10 milligrams per kilogram. And in fact, uh, the number of adverse events that we saw in those 12 patients over that period of time was only three, and they were very minor. What also uh, we were able to, to gauge, able to obtain from that, that study, that phase one study, was uh, survival data. So motor neurone disease is a terrible disease. Uh, the average life expectancy for someone with motor neurone disease is just over two years. So you can start to build up a picture from what I've just told you uh, that a lot of our patients were on drug for 12 to 13 months. And typically within that first year uh, since diagnosis, you lose about 33% um, of the patients with motor neurone disease in that first year. So most of our patients uh, in the study were on study drug for that 12 months and we saw no deaths, we saw no tolerability issues. And then in addition to survival, we also looked at, at some of the more traditional, the FDA approved endpoints. And one of those endpoints is called the ALS functional rating score. And that's a, a score which assesses fine and gross motor function of the patient when they started the study to when they finished the study. And what we were able to show using that score that we slowed the rate of progression in the high dose by 58%. Now, that 58%, while it's a fantastic result, it's a very impressive result and certainly a result that by far beats the, the current approved product. This is only a small, small study. It's a phase one study. The results are encouraging, but it gives us confidence based on the safety and tolerability that we observed for a long period of time, the survival that we observed in the study, and now a you know dissecting out that ALS FR functional rating score to show that we are having a, a benefit it gives us great confidence that we can move forward into a larger st study 
to uh, potentially see if we can have this drug approved by the FDA and in Europe for commercialization and ultimately being made available to patients that have motor neurone disease and ALS. So, so a great result. Yeah, unbelievable, Michael. Yeah, that just unbelievable results, particularly in terms of your safety and tolerability um, of your patients. Now, another thing is the study uh, showed a significant reduction in a specific biomarker. Um, can you briefly explain, you know, what does that finding suggest about the drug's um, potential impact? So the, the biomarker that we that we saw a significant reduction in is called neurofilament light chain or NFL. A neurofilament light chain is a, a way that we can track the uh, breakdown of neurons. It's a, a protein. That protein, when the neuron is broke down, is released into the cerebral spinal fluid, the compartment that uh, bathes the, the spinal cord and the brain, where all the motor neurons are located. And that uh, is, a, is a way of tracking how much or the impact that you may be having on preventing the breakdown of the neuron. So we were able to show in the study, in the patients that we were able to collect uh, cerebral spinal fluid, so again, the compartment that bathes the spinal cord, the first compartment where you were able to see a change, we were able to show that in all the patients that were treated with monopentel over a period of time, we saw a reduction from the beginning of treatment to the end of treatment. So this is really encouraging from the point of view that we have the potential to use that biomarker in our larger phase two, phase three clinical study that we hope to start uh, towards the middle of this year. Okay, interesting. So now, now carrying on with that thought process, Michael, what are the next steps for further research of, of this drug? So there's a couple of things. So the, the obvious one is, is moving from phase one into uh, an adaptive phase two slash three study. So we're in the fortunate position that we, uh, and we've received feedback from the FDA that we can conduct just one more study, uh, one more study to potentially receive either accelerated approval or full approval for monopentol for the treatment of motor neurone disease. Obviously that study needs to be positive and given the results that we've already generated from our phase one, one study in terms of survival, mm -hmm. safety and tolerability, and um, the ability to slow the rate of progression of motor neurone disease, we're, we're well positioned to now move into that um, 210 patient study to ultimately receive uh, either accelerated or full approval from the FDA. So exciting times for the company, uh, looking to start that study about midway through this year. Oh, fantastic, Michael. Now, shifting gears a bit, you recently announced putting together, you know, a, a sterling advisory board, a new advisory board. Can you briefly touch on who's involved and, and what they bring to the table? So, Yes, a couple of weeks ago, we we announced the formation of a, a scientific advisory board that was somewhat specifically focused on motor neurone disease. And the strategy here was to bring on the world leaders, the, the key opinion leaders in motor neurone disease or, uh, or ALS. And we focused on bringing on um, key opinion leaders from Europe and also key opinion leaders from the US because our next study is going to be a global study. And ultimately we want to make sure that uh, we're in a position to have the drug approved in the US under the FDA, but also in Europe uh, as well. So from that strategic point of view, we were very fortunate to bring on board Leonard Vanderberg, who is the chairman of the European network of Cure ALS uh, in Europe. We also, uh, have started to develop a very good relationship with uh, Dr. Sabrina Paganoni. And she is from a very talented neurologist from the Harvard Med Medical School in the US. And, and uh, Sabrina is, is behind, or one of the, the PIs behind the Healy ALS platform trial, which is a, a potential trial that we could be a, a part of. 
we've supplemented uh, those key opinion leaders with a, a very talented statistician. Um, one of the things that we need to be cognizant of as we go forward and, and look for approval from the FDA in, in Europe is uh, the need to, to be able to present and argue our case to the FDA. And Dr. Melanie Quintana is an expert in designing trials for, for rare neurogenitive diseases. And her speciality is motor neurone disease in, in ALS. So a good win for the company to bring on um, Melanie. The, the last person currently in the scientific advisory board is, is Dr. Chris uh, Freitag. And, and Chris is, is located in Europe. He has a, a big pharma background and uh, is a chief medical officer uh, and has been a chief medical officer for uh, for Big Pharma, Roche, uh, Debo Pharma as well. So having his experience uh, opens up potentially some doors for us as we move into that next phase of development uh, with potential partners, but also because of his chief medical officer role um, that he's been fulfilling for, for over 30 years. It also provides us with that additional regulatory capacity with the FDA and the European regulators. So cannot be any more pleased about the scientific advisory board that we've formed. And uh, in particular, to have Leonard and Sabrina there is, um, you know, we're basically covering both sides of the globe. Yeah, fantastic, Michael. It sounds like you've got, you know, a great team of experts that are going to help you along the journey to FDA approval. And, you know, along with some very positive initial uh, phase one trial results. Now, I have just one last question for you, which is to provide, a, you know, along that train, to provide two or three key investment takeaways uh, for our small caps audience as to why pharma should be on their investor stock watch list. It's a great question. And it's the the million dollar question. So, I mean, we've uh, over the last six months uh, been able to to you know put down a plan, and that plan has all been about moving our drug through um, through the regulatory process, uh, requesting an orphan drug designation, having a pre IND meeting with the FDA, uh, and now uh, delivering on phase one study results that progression has allowed us to be in a, a very formidable position, a formidable position from the point of view that we now know that we have a drug that looks promising in terms of safety, offering survival to patients with ALS, uh, and also more information about how the drug works in terms of knocking down neurofilament light chain. But the most impressive thing is that 58% reduction in the rate of decline. So we're very well positioned to move forward into our phase two slash three study. And here's the kicker. The kicker is that we're just one study away from potentially receiving FDA approval, uh, approval in, in Europe for a drug that has the potential to treat uh, 5,000, 10,000 patients uh, with motor neurone disease. So the drug really does have the potential to be a blockbuster uh, based on the current information that we have against our competitors. Our safety profile is superior. Uh, our efficacy profile, although it's only preliminary, is also looking superior to the leading uh, marketed drug for motor neurone disease. So we're in a, a very good position and potentially only two years away from having a drug approved by the FDA. So that would be the key highlights uh, for a compelling uh, investment strategy for someone to, to look at Pharmost. Yeah, truly remarkable, Michael. And it's it's really great to see the progress, uh, you know, that you've been able to achieve in, in, in the time that you've been with Pharmost um, and since our last conversation uh, a few months ago. Um, but yeah, thank you, Michael. Thank you for joining us and thank you for your insights. Really, really looking forward to having you back on the show again soon um, with hopefully some more results. Thanks, Jess.